Bonjour and welcome back. I'm Aaron and this is Kingfisher Games. Today I'm talking to you about a nostalgic game, a game with some nostalgic feel to it. But since it's October uh, and spooky season is upon us, uh, I figured this would be a great time to highlight this game. And that game is Goosebumps the Board Game. It's for ages 8 plus, 2-6 to six player game, and it's family weight. Players take on the role of monsters from the movies, the TV show, or the books, whichever you're familiar with. On the cover you can see Slappy, there's the mummy, and the poodle. A nice innocent looking poodle. It's very dangerous. Players uh, use cards to, to race instead of using a die to roll and move. Um, there's cards. Um, but join me at the table to find out more. In Goosebumps the Board Game, players take on the roles of Goosebumps monsters who have escaped their manuscript to roam the streets of Madison. The only threat to your continued monster mayhem is the magical typewriter of R.L. Stein. So it's a race across town to make sure you capture the typewriter and can never be trapped between the pages of a book. As part of the setup, all players can choose a monster character and put it on the standee and place it on the start space. So we have the Haunted Mask, one of my favorites. We have the Mummy. There's Slappy, that's a favorite in our house. The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Vampire Poodle. And the Abominable Snowman of Pasadena. We're gonna play a three player game. So we'll have Slappy, the Haunted Mask, and the Mummy. Returning the unused standees to the box. Next, you're gonna choose a player to shuffle the deck of cards together. But first, we're gonna look at what's what kind of cards there are. There's various ones uh, labeled one to six with different artwork per number, but you can see all the threes are gonna be the same, fours are gonna be pumpkins, ones are all the clowns, fives are zombies, Looks like two is a gypsy fortune teller, vampire. Yeah, that's all of them. These get shuffled as well as these monster mayhem cards. There are various abilities on them. Found your book, R.L. Stein, haunted car, rolling with my nomies. This gives you protection from freeze ray, found your book and R.L. Stein cards. Freeze ray, oops. Friendly fire, stay, stay where you are. Cancels a three of a kind, and now it's your turn. Ooh, that sounds annoying. Found your book. Move ahead six and send the lead player back to the previous landmark, even if they are on another landmark. Paul of the Praying Mantis. Nothing gets in your way when you're with the biggest monster on the block. Proceed to the next landmark. These are landmarks. Any of these circle locations, those are spots in the movie. You start in the beginning, the players move along this track to R.L. Stein's house, then the police station, the graveyard, high school, the amusement park, and lastly, they get to the end. So these all get mixed together with the numbered cards to form a face down draw pile. Once the deck has been thoroughly shuffled, each player gets four cards each. Then there's a face down pile, draw pile, within reach of all the players. The player to the left of the dealer begins and play moves clockwise. First part of every turn is picking up enough cards to make a hand of five. So on your first turn, you're gonna draw a card and add it to your hand. You always wanna make sure that you have five cards in your hand, because sometimes you might play more than one on your turn. Remember to always draw a card to start your turn. Players follow the trail of the manuscript pages and there are three ways to advance along the track. First, you can play a numbered card from your hand, just placing it face up and moving that number of spaces. The next way you can move up is by playing four of one number and that jumps you to the next landmark along the track. 
And the last way is by playing a Monster Mayhem card. If you play a Monster Mayhem card, all players must follow the instructions on it. If you're on a landmark, you're safe from the effects of Monster Card, except for Found Your Book. After you've played a card or cards from your hand and have moved accordingly, your turn is over and play shifts to the next player on your left. Be sure to pay attention because there are two Monster Mayhem cards that you can play during other players' turns. If at the start of your turn you need to draw a new card, have another player shuffle the discard or the, the played cards to form a new deck. While on your journey through Madison, there are various uh, text abilities on the map. Steal, choose a player and you can steal one of their cards at random. You could get to a shortcut through the graveyard. If you land on the space exactly, then you can move across instead of uh, bypassing the landmark. First person to get to the end wins. You win by playing a card with the exact number or greater needed to land on the end. You cannot use a Monster Mayhem card or three of a kind to win, just playing a single card. An alternative to the start of the game is if you're playing with five or six players, you can choose to start at R.L. Stein's house just to shorten the map up and quicken the game. Well, that's how you play Goosebumps the board game. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, click the like button, subscribe. Uh, let us know in the comments below what your favorite Goosebumps monster is. And check out this, this? Uh, top 10 list for spooky games and see if Goosebumps the board game made it to the list. Well, that's it for today. Gigwabman Minowa, we'll see you again.